From the Massachusetts Broadcaster's Station of the Year, this is Western Mass News at 6 p.m. The clock is ticking to get your child the flu shot. I'm Audrey Russo and coming up, how one local school district is helping parents meet the new state mandate. And support pours in for a family, a Southwick family, who lost their home just days after having a new baby. Details on who's pitching in and how you can help out. Plus, a major change in store for the 2020 edition of the Big E. Why you may not see the same type of shows next. We begin tonight with developing news out of Washington as the White House is reportedly putting pressure on the FDA to grant emergency use for Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. Good Friday evening, everyone. Welcome to Western Mass News at 6. I'm Chris Pisano. And I'm Jordan Jagalinzer. In a phone call today, two administration officials say White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows pressed FDA Chief Stephen Hahn to grant the use by the end of day today or face possible firing. The vaccine produced by Pfizer won a critical endorsement Thursday from an FDA panel of outside advisors. Sign off from the agency, which was expected this weekend, is the next step needed to get the vaccine out to the public. Hahn disputed characterizations of his conversation with Chief of Staff Meadows, saying the FDA was encouraged to work fast. If your children attend public school or daycare, you now have less than three weeks to get them a flu vaccine. The governor's flu vaccine mandate applies to all children older than six months, and the deadline is December 31st. Western Mass News reporter Audrey Russo spoke with one school superintendent who is trying to help families in his district. She's live in West Springfield for us with more. Audrey. The superintendent of West Springfield says that the district will hold multiple flu vaccine clinics, the first one going to be here at the middle school, all in the hopes of getting parents to vaccinate their children against the flu before the end of the month. Between our, our health department within the schools and also our, our Department of Public Health for the town, started to think about ways that we could support families, understanding that getting the flu shot can be a challenge right now. Time is running out to get the flu shot for your child. <laughs> Governor Charlie Baker imposing a mandate that all children over six months of age attending daycare, public schools and state universities must get the flu vaccine or risk being barred from attending class. Many families have fought the mandate, some even filing a lawsuit against the state back in the fall. Right now, the deadline is December 31st. We're just moving forward with what we know, which is that it's a requirement for every child, whether they're hybrid, in person, or remote. West Springfield has secured 300 doses, and parents can schedule an appointment for the first clinic on December 15th by calling their child's school nurse. The mandate has faced criticism, even from parents who normally get their child the flu vaccine. We're having an issue with COVID. We're not having an issue with the flu. So I, I don't love the mandate. Christina Irachi tells Western Mass News she got her daughter the vaccine sooner than she normally would have any other year. I definitely made it a lot more of a priority this year. Certainly wasn't going to skip it because I value my daughter's education and I want her in school. The governor has said the mandate was imposed because of the COVID-19 pandemic in an attempt to limit flu-like symptoms in emergency rooms and hospitals. Irachi hopes the mandate won't become a yearly requirement. How do we determine an end date um, and how far do we let this go? Again, West Springfield's first flu vaccine clinic will be here at the middle school on December 15th, and parents can call their child's school nurse in order to get a slot. Reporting live in West Springfield, Audrey Russo for Western Mass News. Audrey, thank you for that live report. An outpouring of support for a Southwick family of four with a baby less than a week old who lost just about everything in a house fire Wednesday morning. The Southwick Police Department already stepping up to help, and now the father's employer wants to do the same. Western Mass News reporter Leon Purvis explains. We were just jaws to the floor. Um, everyone knew Dan had just had a, uh, had a baby over the weekend. Um, and so, yeah, we were, we were in shock, not sure really how to react, what to do. 
The HR manager of Brothers Auto Transport speaking with Washington Mass News about his colleague David Kozlov and his family losing everything in a house fire. The company is based in Pennsylvania. Kozlov is one of their drivers and delivers cars to dealerships. The company didn't know what to do to help at first, but then they came up with the idea to make a GoFundMe page and they would match the first $2,500 donated. So it was hard to put something together. So we came up with this thinking it was the best idea. At least we could get him something, maybe not immediately, but you know, pretty soon, uh, pretty quickly. But the family will soon get immediate help from the Southwick Police Department. After we spoke with the department on Thursday, they tell Washington Mass News the trailer they put out for the cause of family filled up quickly. The department's top priority was to get supplies for the family's baby who was just born on Sunday, as well as toys for their toddler aged daughter. The, uh, the response has been absolutely incredible. Um, we filled that trailer in more in just the last 24 hours, so it's, it's pretty incredible. Detective Sergeant Thomas Kretza of the Southwick Police Department tells Washington Mass News they already hit their goal and more. And our overall objective here was to just get enough items and gift cards and things like that, clothes, Christmas presents, just to hold them off for two, two to three weeks, you know, until the insurance company uh, kicks in. Kretza adds they're still accepting donations and gift cards until midday Saturday. He also says the family is thankful for all the help they're receiving, and it brings tears to their eyes. Information on how to donate to the GoFundMe will be on our website, westernmassnews.com. For Western Mass News, I'm Leon Purvis. Well, we did get a milder day out there today with highs climbing to near 50 degrees almost to everywhere. Orange, the cool spot at 46, but Westfield and North Adams both hitting 51 this afternoon. And tonight we're still in the 40s, but dropping back down toward the lower 40s now. Breezes are out of the south-southwest, becoming lighter and eventually even near calm overnight tonight. Looking at the temperatures currently, the colder air moving through northern Berkshire County and Franklin County, where some are getting close to freezing already, but it's significantly milder farther off to the south. And the wind kind of telling that story right there too. Orange and North Adams both calm and still dealing with fair conditions. Meanwhile, the breeze out of the south keeping temperatures up a little bit for everybody else. Now, we do have some cloud cover that will be building back into the area tonight. We'll also have some patchy low clouds and fog that develop overnight tonight as well. But if you're going to do a Christmas light evening stroll throughout your neighborhood, it's not looking too bad. We'll be dropping back into the 30s but staying above three, freezing through midnight. Light breezes out of the south and we'll call it partly cloudy skies. But then overnight as fog develops and temperatures drop below freezing, there's the potential for some black ice to develop through early tomorrow morning. So keep that in mind if you do have to travel in the early morning hours, might be pretty slippery out there. But that'll be short lived. Temperatures will climb back to near 40 as we head through tomorrow morning and showers will return looking to last most of the afternoon and evening. We'll take a look at your full weekend forecast and the snow chances for next week in just a few minutes. Back to you. Oh boy. All right, Jenna, thanks. Turning now to the latest coronavirus case numbers in the state over the last two weeks. Today, the Massachusetts Department of Public Health reports more than 5,400 new cases of COVID-19. That brings the total number of confirmed cases in the Bay State to nearly 270,000. 65,741 of those are believed to currently be active. The state also seeing 47 new deaths. The statewide death toll now stands at 11,010. In sports news, a bit later than initially planned, but the UMass men's basketball team opened its season this afternoon. The Minutemen playing host to Northeastern there at the Mullins Center. They did post a victory 94 to 79. UMass was supposed to begin their season about two weeks ago at the Bubbleville at Mohican Sun. However, they had to withdraw and then postpone the start of their campaign after a positive COVID-19 test. They will play at Northeastern on Sunday. New at 6, the Big E Fairgrounds announcing today that there will be no 4-H livestock, horse, or dog shows during the 2021 fair. A large majority of the animals that fairgoers enjoy each year are a part of that group. Western Mass News is getting answers tonight on the reason this decision was made. 
The Big E notifying the New England 4-H states that in 2021, the livestock, horse, and dog shows will not be part of the September fair. Western Mass News learning that the Moses Building, which is used as a dorm, is being shut down by the city of West Springfield's Department of Public Health. It's past its expiration date, I think, for a lot of people. The dorms from 1923 are where many kids involved in the youth agriculture programs would sleep. My hope is to raise the funds necessary through philanthropy to be able to one day rebuild build that building. Eastern States Exposition President and CEO Gene Cassidy says that agriculture will still be at the forefront of 2021's fair. At the centerpiece of the Eastern States Exposition will be our agricultural program. We have to keep agriculture front and center. We have to focus on the youth. Subcommittees are now working on a separate non-fair 4-H event for New England youth that would be held in either July or August. There's no fair in, the, in, in North America that can touch us for our outreach to youth and agriculture. Cassidy says he's confident their livestock programming will be intact for 2021.